Um, it's been really good being home. Uh, yes, load shedding, it's just part of it, right? Um, but you kind of get your hours and you work around it. So that's okay. But then again, within saying that, China has been great to us in some aspects, but it's so good to come back to a Western way of living where we can go to the supermarket and there is Western foods and just the food you know. That's just been absolutely brilliant. On behalf of myself, Warren Inferno, Andrew Harrison, my co-host, Tawanda Tadavinga, and Pila Mflongo, the team of In The Boxing Podcast, would like to welcome you to the next edition. I would like to welcome two very special guests and very close friends in the form of Divan Neathlin and Erin Sykes. Got that right, did I? Erin Sykes, all the way from Australia, but living and, uh, in China at the moment. Andrew? How Warren. are you? Oh, it's fine. You're very good. Yeah, well. I see you've had a fight with the lawnmower, you've had a haircut. They shear the sheep once a year. Shear the sheep once a year. I did talk about uh, your hair to our two guests. And they, uh, they were expecting a big bushy hair, but uh, they've got the hair. they came for the once a year haircut. Uh, it was an instruction. Instruction by the wife. Yeah, eh? I, I, it's been expensive bloody divorce if I didn't so, have so, a haircut. So, so you are, you've been married for 38 years and the advice you can give is listen to the instructions from the wife. If you want to stay married, yeah. <laughs> Divan and Erin are two guests. Welcome to the show. Welcome to South Africa, more importantly. I'll start with the ladies. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you, Erin. Good, lovely to have you and Divan on the podcast with us. We're going to learn a little bit more about you both. Thank you for your time. I know that you're trying to explore as much of South Africa as you can, but thanks for being here. Thank you. Divan? Welcome home. Yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, been a long time coming. We've been stuck in China for uh, three and a half years. So it's really good to be home, see the family. Um, yeah, really been enjoying it. Still got uh, about three weeks left, so going to make the most of it. Okay, well, yeah, back home. It's lovely to see you in those uh, times in China. Couldn't have been easy, but we'll talk about them more in a moment. Let's tell the public, Aaron. A little bit about you. Firstly, obviously born and raised in Australia. Yes. And what did you do in Australia? So I was born and raised in Adelaide, South Australia, and fell out of school with very little direction but a passion for horses, and went straight to the racetrack. Um, and from there I started as a stable hand. I worked my way up to be a track rider. Uh, I worked for David Hayes out at Lindsay Park. Incredible facilities, similar to this. Um, and just developed such a passion for racing and the people and the horses, the thoroughbred in particular, I decided that I wanted to develop further. So I went on to do an equine science degree at Charles State University. Uh, decided landing on my head was probably the last thing I wanted to do with it. Um, and from there really developed a passion for injury prevention. Um, so seen a lot of people that I've had race rules and things like that, and I'd love to look at ways that we can work on injury prevention and rehabilitation goes hand in hand with that, um, and the therapies that we use. So I started directing myself into the therapeutic side of things. Um, I got the opportunity at the Hong Kong Jockey Club, and they wanted to develop me further. So from there, I went on to do the CERT course at Tennessee University, which is a rehabilitation practitioner course, and do some placements at Harvard University in the UK, which was sensational. They had a therapy unit there whether for aqua treadmills and all sorts of fun things, so um, it's been quite a journey. How's that for a journey? <laughs> but further than mine. <laughs> <laughs> but what a great story to you. Uh, what a lovely, you know, falling out of school and just following your love and passion. Oh, it just shows you, I mean, you don't have to go to university and things like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, if you've, if you've got the passion for something, you, you, you'll, you'll fall on your feet. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a wonderful journey, uh, Aaron and Divan. We know your story, how it all started for you, so I'm not going to, to ask you that question. I am going to ask you about how your career has changed path, well not really changed path, but developed and progressed, because the last time we spoke to you, you were just a work writer in, in, in China. But things have changed quite considerably, tell us how. Yes, yeah, so um, I now am an instructor with, um, with a racing talent training centre. So is that what they call it, a Racing Talent Training Centre? Correct, yes. Racing Talent Training Centre. 
Um, so what we do is we don't just focus on, on riding, we also teach grooms when they come, give them an introductory to the horses, um, get them leading the horses, introduce them, obviously show them the good parts and the bad parts, getting them to groom the horses. Um, and then we also do that with, I mean, we've trained some of uh, Aaron's staff as well. Um, so we also do that. We also do the riding side of things where we just get them going to the tracks, get them riding out the gates, get them going to the big track where they do gallops together. And um, after we do that, we send them through to Hong Kong where uh, Mr. Kutsi takes care of them after that, or they go to Australia. Um, so we've got apprentice jockeys and work riders there. Um, so they do the introductory to riding and to racing where we are, and then they get sent off after that for further exposure and experience. So you're in, in China? Correct. That, what's that place called? Chonghua. Chonghua. Yeah. Chonghua. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's been, we also get uh, guys that want to be farriers or they not capable of being work riders and they want to change career path and they go either into the veterinary side of things or to the uh, farrier side of things. So um, it's quite interesting to see how the, uh, the jockey club has been able to spread them out and make sure all of them are taken care of, whether it is rider, farrier, going into the veterinary side of things, going into the rehab side of things, or even going into the retired horse unit program. The, the Hong Kong Jockey Club are a pretty fantastic organization, but they've got a bit of cash. We haven't. <laughs> no, they've got the cash to do it. Yeah. I saw the turnover the other day. It was a staggering amount of money. Yeah, it is, it is mind-boggling, but it is the way they, they do things there is, is unbelievable. So it also costs them a pretty penny to do things. You no, know? Sure. Um, and it's, it's quite fascinating how, how the, the club runs everything they everything is just so structured there um so yeah it's it's really it's i'm consider myself very lucky to work there who are you do who do you report to when you know so i report to amy chang okay so my uh, but you started line, you started off with john size or something didn't correct yes yeah, yeah. so i was john size's work writer for three and a half years um and then so my direct line manager is uh, michael de beer actually who used to be He's a jockey, jockey yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know you guys know him yeah um, and then our boss above that is Amy Chan. Okay. Yeah. Aaron, your staff that you work with, or your colleagues rather, I don't really like that word staff, but your colleagues, uh, tell us about them. I mean, are you obviously the head, are you the, you're the head lady there, and, and yeah. you've got a good big group of people or a small group? Yeah, so I manage a team of 10 currently. Um, we have an expanding headcount at the moment, we're still recruiting. But currently 10 mainland staff, um, they all speak Chinese, so there have been some language barrier challenges in trying to operate the rehab unit. Um, but they're all really willing, they're keen, they're enthusiastic and they love horses. I had the privilege of uh, being with Divan and Erin and some family members at the Kruger National Park, as you know, that's why we're a day late to record the podcast. And we got to speak about these wonderful experiences and difficult situations. But although it's tough and although it's uh, um, tough and, and makes it difficult to, to communicate, there have been some fun and, and entertaining stories with the language barrier. But at the bottom, of the, at the end of the day, the work gets done and the communication gets through. 100%. I mean, um, we just lucky. I mean, wherever would I be, um, myself and Michael, be in charge of a stable of 57 horses having to take care of that? Plus, we've got the riding to take care of and the. The, the training up the guys, so we we just count ourselves really lucky to be able to work for the club and to experience these sorts of things. Yes, COVID was hard, but it was hard for everyone else. China did make it a bit difficult with the lockdowns, but we are through the worst of it and the, the future is looking bright. What's it like when you get all these people that come in and, and you're training them up and it's, it's very much like a school, a college where, you know, you get some that are maybe a little lazy, some that are not so interested, some that are overexcited. I mean, do you get that? Do you find that you have to sort of manage each person individually and, and some maybe fall away, some are not really into it? or? 100%. Um, but, you know, you do... It's... I got my experience from the academy, which it was the same there, right? So, um, you just do the best you can and try and give them the help and guidance that they need. So it's, it's, it has its challenges, obviously, 
but it's a, it's a team of us working together. So we go, okay, I'm not as suited to help this person. Michael may be better in that way or vice versa, you know? So it, it helps having the two different personalities to help train the, um, train the guys up as best as we can, yeah. Erin, at your establishment, tell us about some of the equipment that you've got there. I've seen a few pictures, you've got some really fancy equipment there. Yeah, we've got some really great facilities. So the rehab unit was originally a trial unit. Uh, they just wanted to see if the trainers got involved and whether they picked up services. Um, so what we initially had was just three chilled spas. So you put the horses in the spas for distal limb, you know, swelling, um, anything like exercise recovery, tendons, suspensory ligaments, uh, joints, anything like that. Um, and then we had one aqua treadmill. We've now expanded and we've got two beautiful aqua treadmills side by side. Um, and we're about to get another eight spas. In total we'll have 11 spas and we're about to get our new two high speed treadmills. We've also got uh, laser therapy, ultrasound therapy, electrotherapy, we've got pulse electromagnetic field therapy, and I do some hands-on therapy with the horses okay. too. Yeah, that's right. Okay. No. no wonder they can run every week. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're in such good, uh, good condition. Is this rehabilitation facility open to any, anybody? Can any trainer send? I mean, absolutely. absolutely. So all of the trainers can send horses to the rehab unit as well as the retired horse unit and RDB. Okay. Maybe oh, a stupid okay. question. Sorry, because I'm going to forget. Remember your question. You know, I've got a really bad memory, George. Uh, what's your name again? Paul. Uh, is there a charge for that? Maybe a stupid question. So if a trainer sends it to the rehab, do they, they get invoiced for that? Yes. Much like any of the veterinary services. Okay. Yes. Carry I've on. forgotten what I was going oh, to don't say. Don't be silly, you haven't forgotten. We were talking about the spas and all those wonderful things. I was just talking to our chief staff here, Ryan, uh, Ryan Hutchinson. Uh, he was in Hong Kong and he said they, they had a big swimming pool there, uh, which no one used, <laughs> until John Size decided yeah, to right. use it. And he said there were seven horses lined up the next day. That's right. Yeah. So at the moment, the, the pools, even up in Chong Fa, they get used every day and they are busy and it's by almost every trainer. So the, the, way right, the, yeah. the way the training has taken off is, is pretty insane. But John Sides was the leader in yeah. setting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he, he said, he said the, the pool was, was, was yep. no one used it until, yep. he, until he used it and then everybody lined up the next day. That's right. Yeah. How are the South Africans, uh, ex-South Africans? You, you know, yeah, so... Uh, tell us about them, how they all do. Um, I, saw, I saw Jared, he was doing quite well. It was his birthday the other day, so we had a birthday lunch for him. He's doing quite well. He's uh, working for Jamie Richardson's currently. Can he speak uh, Chinese as fast as he speaks English? Uh, not really, not yet. He, has, he, has, he hasn't gotten it yet. Um, and then we saw, um, we had a bit of a conversation with Caris uh, at the track. He's doing well, the, the baby's doing well, uh, Xavier's doing well, his missus, uh, so that's all good. Um, and also his brothers, they're Mervyn. He's a, he's a work rider out there as well. He's all good. I'm trying to think who is, 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 is Craig... Craig, Craig Benton still there? Uh, no, he's not there. Anymore. Not there anymore. Okay. And yeah. then, of course, uh, Luke and Lyle, uh, they're obviously Hong Kong. Yeah, there, so, so um, I didn't really get to catch up with them too much because uh, we were also just as much on a tight schedule. We had to do some work while we were in, in Hong Kong. So um, we didn't get to catch up with everyone. But I saw them at the races, um, obviously not the parade ring. Uh, so I just spoke to them there for a couple of minutes and they were all good, yeah. You've, you've raced in both courses, have you? You've both raced in both courses? Here, or yeah, course? so uh, we, um, we went to Charlton and to Happy Valley, yeah. It, it is, is it as grand as, you know, when you see on the TV, how many watch it? It looks like it's an outstanding event. It is, it is huge. The public love it. They do everything for the punter. And they really look after their people really well. There. Yeah, I saw that that, that uh, New Year's meeting. They had seventy thousand people on yep. course. Sure. And they make quite a spectacle with fireworks and all sorts of things. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't scare the horses. I'm glad you mentioned after that. Horses. Um, so uh, once the horses are off the property, then they. Uh, on some of the big meetings, yeah, they've okay, had some they theatrics. Because okay. <laughs> okay, we've yeah we've, we've yeah we've had fireworks here and and fireworks and uh, a lot of unhappy trainers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay. So okay now. Um, I've just gone black for a moment. The Come on, George. No problem, Harold. Um, Ex-South Africans, we've touched on the ex-South Africans, and, and what advice can you give South Africans that are here that maybe want to pursue traveling and going overseas? Not maybe to, I'm not necessarily saying to China or Hong Kong or Australia, but anywhere. Oh, do it. 
do it for the experience firstly and secondly is you you will um, you will see how much home really means to you while you're over there okay. because now of course having COVID that nobody predicted that yeah, I mean, so how, how, how did you manage with it Devon and, and, and Aaron I mean it's tough well it, it was really difficult for the first two years of two and a half years of COVID I was on my lo a lonesome it was it was difficult especially with the lockdowns and you can't really go to the shops you can't go outside of your district um, and the club tried to keep us safe so they also locked us in you know <laughs> it was it was very difficult can imagine um, but once it started probably last year once it started getting quite rough um, all the expats that were out there kind of came together and really supported each other and that's that's how we met well that was my next question I was going to let Erin answer that how did you meet the two of you well, as you said, um, once COVID really kicked off, everyone was really isolated. And as he says, all the expats came together. They started doing things like celebrating Christmas together and Easter's together because they just had no one else. Yeah. All their families were back home and they were locked into China. Um, so, we, yeah, we met at just a... We'd work separate hours for all of these years at the same race course and never met each other. But, but you had sort of maybe gatherings. once or twice, you know, on the track, as you say, cross paths, cross paths, really. but never really yeah, met. Yeah, yeah but yeah. like she said, we worked different hours, so we didn't we didn't really know each other existed at the time. So only like last year, when things were getting real tough, um, and we started joining in together and stuff like that, then we we actually met and. I knew a name after that. No? <laughs> so then things started kicking off. Erin, it's the first time that you've come to sunny South Africa and you've had a little bit of a... Jeez, a South Australia is not, not bad. It doesn't rain there at all. Yes. <laughs> it um, is a bit of a whirlwind trip that you've had so far and I'm sure once you get to Cape Town where you've got a longer period you can have a bit more of a chilled time. But so far you've seen Kruger National Park, you've uh, gone into Johannesburg, albeit for a few minutes, uh, KZN, Durban, I'm Schlanger Rocks. Tell us about uh, your thoughts so far. Look, I'm blown away. I think this is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, quite sincerely. Um, going all the way around Durban, the houses are magnificent. They're beautiful, comparable to places you'd see in Malibu that celebrities live in. I just was blown away. Um, and the track here, this facility is one of the nicest facilities I've ever seen. It's a paradise for horses, it really is. Um, seeing the horses, they've got these big open spaces, they've got the paddocks that they can go in after. This is heaven, guys. You guys are really lucky. I think almost that's uh, needs no, to be just, highlighted. Yeah, but you sort of take it for granted because you, you haven't been anywhere else. It's but, divine, yeah. it really is. Yeah. And uh, we need to highlight that comment because it is paradise and we are lucky, guys. Mm. That uh, to wonder always likes to put a little quota. And I think that must be the quote because we tend to get stuck in our ways and people moan and groan and it's not good enough. But when you get a fresh set of eyes coming in from you know, another country and realize that it actually is darn good, our setup. And I think we need to be proud of it. I know you haven't been to the race courses of South Africa yet, but hopefully you'll get to, to one in the Cape. Um, but yeah, and the wildlife, I mean, the animals and the, that Kruger experience was also something special. Yeah, that was mind-blowing as well. That was something different. Um, seeing an elephant right next to the road, seeing an elephant that always smooshed our car. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <That was> amazing. <laughs> what had happened is there was a baby elephant on the right-hand side of the road. And, and the mother, mother on, on the, the other. Yeah. And of course, the car was in the middle because we all thought that it was just the one on the right, but we realised it was the baby. And they were busy taking photographs of the baby and not seeing, we were seeing the, the mother coming across yeah. to the car to, as Erin says, to push the car. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it's not a good idea to be yeah. between yeah. a mother and its car. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. well, anyway, we didn't know the mother was there because there was quite a few elephants on that side yeah. and the baby was there too. And up the, the bank comes the mother and I was like, oh, shit. And away we go. <laughs> Luckily, the car was faster than the elephant. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Um, but yeah, an unbelievable experience to see that. And then a leopard on the tree, I mean, that was, that was yeah. taking a breath away. We got to see some really crazy things. I didn't expect to be exposed to that many animals in that many scenarios so quickly. We saw the vet treating an animal. 
Um, we saw some really fantastic things. Yeah, that was special. Devon, how have you found things, um, you know, since you're back after a while, you know, and again, not to be negative, yes, we face the challenges of load shedding, we face the challenges The lights have just come on. The lights have just come on, that's why we're all a bit brighter now. Uh, how have you found it? Um, it's been really good being home. Uh, yes, load shedding, it's just part of it, right? Um, but you kind of get your hours and you work around it. So that's okay. But then again, within saying that, China has been great to us in some aspects, but it's so good to come back to a Western way of living where we can go to the supermarket and there is Western foods and just the food you know. That's just been absolutely brilliant. You know, so I you like love frogs and things like that? <laughs> well, you know, the chicken feet, I just got a bit tired of them at the, <laughs> towards the end. And the python steaks and all that. Goes to the <laughs> Aaron, was, uh, Aaron was telling us that uh, you're lucky that you're able to order food in. Oh, yes, yeah, so we can get imported food because uh, the local food is, is probably not to our taste. Last Wednesday. Look, uh, you can go into the to the major cities, which is about an hour and a half away. It's not not too bad. It's about an hour and a half away where it is. You're in the middle of Guangzhou. There is Irish pubs, English pubs, and Italian restaurants, and Michelin star restaurants, and it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, in the city. Um, in the city. So when you're at home, you basically just order your foods online, and then you're good to go. So. It actually works out in our favor in that way because you get to save your money during the week and then on the weekends when you're going to Guangzhou, you, uh, you stay the night and... Blow it all. Yeah. Well, yeah, basically. <laughs> the um, Met, the World Sports Betting Met is coming up. That's a huge race down in the Cape. Have you had a chance to look or have you heard any rumblings? Or? Um, well, my bet would be Jet Dock. Okay, you're a Jet Dock fan. You're a Jet Dock fan. Now, I don't know, Erin, if you've studied or looked at the field or not just yet. You're a no, holiday man. No, that's fine. Okay, so you're a Jet Dock fan. The trip to Cape Town is up next. What are you? What are you? What are you anticipating? What are you expecting? Cause you've Everyone's really built it up. After I've seen this place, everyone's like, well, just wait till you get to Cape Town. So I am really excited. I'm thrilled to see the beaches. Everyone really raves about the beaches there. Yeah. So I can't wait. You, we, we, we case it in, boys. I mean, we, we proudly case it in, boys. We live here. But I mean, are you wild about Cape Town as everybody else is? No. Not? Okay. Well, uh, that's a bit of an anti-climax. Yeah. <laughs> Cape Town's best in the winter because there are no tourists and all the locals stay inside. So you get the whole beach to yourself. I'll come back in winter. <laughs> I told you Andrew will tell you as it is, but I promise you. Um, no, it's very pretty. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty spot. The plans for the future? I mean, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, you want you to sort of stay in China as long as you can or travel or explore. What, what's your plan, Erin? Look, we've done the hard yards now. I mean, we were locked in for a really long time and that was challenging. But now that everything's open, we have the opportunities that we first expected when we arrived there and I sort of want to see them out now. There are so many developments happening. I'm building a facility so I'm getting two new facilities at the racetrack um, and from there there are so many new developments and exciting projects in the pipeline so I want to see it out. I want to stick around and develop with the developments that are happening there. Same as you. Uh, yeah so we've um, with racing starting in 2026 uh, I think that the the possibility of growing there is going to be endless. So I also want to stay there as long as possible. And now that there's no COVID, I mean, Thailand is an hour's flight away. So Vietnam is just as just as close. You can go to the Philippines too. So it makes China your home base where you can travel around every three weeks or four weeks for the weekend because it's just an hour flight away. So it kind of makes it the place to be. Oh, I suppose, okay. in fairness, you know, you were there to, at, at, at a shocking time, I mean, in COVID. You know, now that things we are had normal, the, you can experience what it's normal to be in China. We had the first year that I was there, so I got there in 2018. So 2018 to 2019 was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I got to come home twice, um, saw Vietnam, spent Christmas with my brother in Vietnam, went to Thailand twice. was absolutely fantastic. Uh, COVID hit. Still got to travel around China, which was very interesting. Um, we went to some beautiful places. We went to Sanya Island, which is incredible. Uh, we went uh, skiing in Jilin, which is just as fantastic. 
Um, so I think now that, that it's opened up, it's just going to be so good, not just for our life, but also for our career, being able to go to Hong Kong every, every three weeks to a race meeting there, communicating with the trainers, um, communicating with the jockeys, trying to build yourself up, um, getting your reputation out there, and um, just expanding yourself. So really excited for what the future holds. We are in the home straight because I know you're under pressure for time constraints. But what do you do? You get aggravated. You come to a new country. You get your, your boyfriend and friends and, and, and others that are in your in your in contact with you with the traditional foods. You know, we say here's a samosa. Try a samosa. Here's a bar one, and and, and, and here's some cook sisters. You try cook sisters for the first time yesterday. I I don't get frustrated. That's that's. No, I, I love it. I think it's it's crazy. It's um, all these different things that you're telling me to try and enjoy, <laughs> and some of them fantastic, and some of them are a little strange. Um, but Biltong, let me take Biltong. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's she wonderful. goes, you eat meat as a snack. Yeah, Who eat does meat that? Meat as a snack. What yeah, is that, guys? Oh, oh. <laughs> Aaron's, Aaron's uh, baffled that we eat meat as a snack. <laughs> oh, Drew Vos. Drew Vos, yeah. She <laughs> must have had the pup and sauce and the shisa and yama. Yep. She was treated to shisa and yama and a dry place. Um, of course, curries and you, you can't do spicy food, so you can't really try. I'm not curry. afraid of spices. Okay, okay, because uh, maybe we should try and get somebody to make a bunny channel. Oh, Hollywood bunny, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you enjoy it because uh, obviously, when you know, you've, as you've touched on the food in, in China, it's you know it's very different. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, you sometimes you get a bit cautious when people say, "Well, try this and try that." But when, when you go to Cape Town, you must try a bokum. What's it called? A bokum. I've never even heard of it. I've never heard of it either. What is that? It's, it's dried mullet. Fish. A dried fish. Oh, well, well, you want some fish built on? Sure, let's give it a crack. Fish <laughs> built on. Yeah. Fish, we'll we'll give it a run. <laughs> no, no, it's not good. No, bokum. Dried mullet. Okay, bokum. Well, you better remember the yeah. bokum. I, I won't be trying to. what's up there, please. <laughs> I'm not a fish Because you eat it, fan. eat it head and all. Just chow Oh, gosh. It's like yeah. chips. Yeah, no, I'm all right, thanks. You can have it. <laughs> the... Just before we wrap and thank them, the Met, as we said, is on Saturday. Uh, who have you tipped? Who have you selected? Uh, make it snappy. Okay, make it snappy. So From you make sparkling it water. So you go for the Philly Exacta? Yeah, boy. Okay, make it snappy and sparkling water. Uh, just quickly going through the page, um, a couple of questions for you. Uh, a horse like Captain's Ransom, possible? Horse it looks beat. a banker. Looks a banker, okay. Yeah. Uh, when I say possible horse to beat, uh, it does a miracle. This looks to be the main danger, but yeah. 16 is the concern. Yeah. Captain's Ransom, we're happy. I'm happy. Um, let's move along and talk about Princess Kala. Could be another banker? Yeah, as, I say, as Ravi was saying, you, you you should take two two pick sixes. One, you go light, yes, and then add up. For, the, for your other pick six, you just add. So, okay. hoping for an upset. And I quite like the brass on the day. So, uh, Captain's Ransom and a Princess Keller possible but banker. Also remember, it's uh, Hong Kong World Pools. Yes, Hong we, Kong we, World Pools. We're betting into the big pools. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, don't that's, forget. That's going to be fantastic. And then, uh, uh, comedy done for me. Uh, the Philly, um, the Philly for Andrew, which is uh, Make It Snappy, and uh, Divan Likes, uh, Jet Dock. Aaron is just going to enjoy the race and hope uh, that we have the best result. Just quickly before we wrap our sponsors, uh, score 10 and score 6, I a card call. I forgot my shirt, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay, the only reason why we're going to let you off for forgetting your sponsored shirt is because that must be a new shirt to you, that's quite fancy for you. No, I bought this when Nelson Mandela was alive, so... Okay, so it's no. an old shirt, it's a magnificent shirt. Good shirt, where's the Addis at? Have you got elements? No, no, no shoes. Andrew refuses to wear shoes. He loves them. He goes to the Kruger National Park five times a year. He's a bush boy. He loves it. He go walks around no shoes, and he's just one with the world. Love it. One with nature. That's it. Yeah. And he tells you as it is. Now, uh, so yes, thanks to all our sponsors. Card call, I believe. Card call is 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 a fantastic. I've tried it. It's a fantastic bet. Uh, card call, score six, score ten. Go on and have a look at all of that on our tab on the website. But that's a wrap. We wanted to just introduce you to Aaron and Divan and, and catch up with them now that they're back in South Africa, especially Divan, who is a South African. To both of you, lovely to be with you. We, we could have gone on for another hour, but I know, because our podcasts are normally an hour, but I know that you need to get to the destination and there is traffic on the road. Thank you, Erin. I'll start with the lady, even if you don't mind. Thanks for being with us and, and just thanks for coming to the country and thanks for doing what you do. Thank you. It's been excellent. Divan, 
Well, we're still going to see you a bit more, but uh, well done to you for flying the South African flag high. Thank you very and, much. And uh, it's just been great to have you back and give us an update on your story. Perfect. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, great to be back. To you. What? Not being so grumpy today. You behaved. And uh, to our team, to of course uh, Tawanda, to uh, the whole team behind the scenes, and uh, Pila, and of course Pear. She's in the background. Hello, Pear. And uh, lovely to have her on the scene as well. From a wrap, that's a wrap from all of us. Uh, this weekend is the World Sports Betting um, Cape Town Met. Plenty of racing, actually. You've heard from Andrew Hong Kong uh, World Pools. And uh, it's just going to be absolutely brilliant racing. If you can't get to Hollywood Bits, Kettleworth, I suggest you get to your TV because it's going to be a fantastic day's racing. From all of us, and uh, we wish uh, Divan and Aaron and their families all the very best for the future. And just thank them so much for sharing their story with us. From the whole team, be safe and uh, be kind as always. And we'll see you where we will see you. In the number one box. In it's the us number one box. That's where we'll see you. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.